I used to think that automating curtains and blinds was an absolute gimmick. But then I was sitting in the living room one evening and the sun was setting and my automation to start fading on the lights kicked in. I found myself thinking, wouldn't it be great if my curtains and blinds closed automatically at the same time? It is great. It's not a gimmick. Hey home automation guy. Start the show. In this video, I'll show you how you can automate opening your existing blinds with this Zenny Smart Zigbee blind controller and your curtains with this SwitchBot Smart Curtain Controller. I've been using these for a few weeks now and I'm gonna share with you the pros and cons that I've experienced with these devices. I'll show you how you can connect these into your Home Assistant and finally, I'll show you how I've made some of my favorite automations. Let's start with the Zenny Smart Zigbee Blind Controller. This is simply a white labeled Tuya blind controller, which means you can find dozens of different brand names rebadging the exact same looking product. I've not used any of these other brands, but I'm sure they look, behave, and function the exact same way. This model is designed for the roller blinds that I have, which are open and closed with a chain. But there are many different types of controllers out there for different types of blinds, including Venetian blinds and vertical blinds. I paid 60 US dollars for the controller, and in the box I received the curtain motor, a charging cable, mounting screws, and a few different gears that you can swap in and out to work with the different types of chains you may have on your blind. I had a plastic chain on my blind originally, and it didn't work so well with any of the attachments. So I replaced the chain with this infinite metal loop chain that I bought on Amazon. It's worked flawlessly since then. This device has some really cool features. Firstly, it's really simple to install. You just find the attachment that works best with your blind, find a good position to mount it, and I stuck it to the wall with double-sided tape. Secondly, it has a rechargeable battery, which means you don't need any wires permanently attached to your window frame. I've been using this for a couple of months already on a single charge. When it does come time to charge it, you can just plug the included cable into the bottom and charge it with a USB charger, then pack it away once it's full. Thirdly, it uses Zigbee, which means all the communications remain local in my house and I don't need any cloud accounts. I can connect it directly to Home Assistant and it responds instantly when I ask it to open or close. The device also has some bad points too. Firstly, the instruction manual is absolute garbage. It took me a long time to figure out how to calibrate the motor so it knew where the top and bottom positions were. Secondly, it's quite bulky and looks ugly on the window frame. I get that it needs to house a motor and a long lasting battery, but I would prefer it to look a little bit nicer. You might be able to hide it behind the blind, but that only works when it's closed. Thirdly, it really only works when you can mount it parallel to the chain like this. If you try and mount it sideways, which I would have to do for these windows in here, it doesn't work at all and keeps slipping and getting caught up with itself, which is quite a shame. Overall, it's a pretty decent device and I would recommend it if you want to motorize existing blinds that you already have in your home. This is perfect for me as I'm renting this house, but if I own my own house, I'd probably want to spend a little bit extra and buy new blinds that had the motor physically within the roller itself so it looked nicer. Adding it to Home Assistant is as simple as adding any other Zigbee device, you just have to pair them together. I use Zigbee to MQTT and it was immediately detected as a cover device. In Home Assistant, curtains, blinds and garage doors are considered covers because they cover the window or car hole. I've also tested it with ZHA and it worked with that integration as well. Cover devices can be controlled in Home Assistant with the two up and down buttons which raise and lower the blind. And you can then set a specific position between 0 and 100. 100 is fully opened, 0 is fully closed, and 50 is halfway. I'll show you how to use the blinds in Home Assistant automations in a couple of minutes. But first, let's take a look at the SwitchBot curtain controller. SwitchBot were kind enough to send me this curtain opener free of charge to test out on my channel. Thank you, SwitchBot. This model is designed for a curtain mounted on a curtain rod, but they also have versions for U-rails and I-rail curtain as well. At the time of recording, they cost 65 pounds, which is about 90 US dollars. In the box, you get the curtain motor itself, a wide range of clips, stickers, and tape that help you adjust the curtain so that it opens and closes smoothly, and a USB charging cable. I've only been using this for a couple of weeks right now, but it has some great features. Firstly, it's really easy to install. The instruction manual is really clear, and the app has a setup wizard that made calibration a breeze. Once you pair it with the app, it asks you some questions about the type of curtain that you have and guides you through the setup and calibration process. Once it's finished, you can start using it immediately. It's also hidden out of sight behind the curtain itself, so it's not an eyesore like the blind motor. Secondly, it's battery powered and rechargeable, so there are no cables that need to be run. If you need to charge it up, you can just unclip it from the curtain rod and plug it in for a few hours. For an extra 20 pounds or 30 US dollars, you can buy this solar panel attachment that can be attached to the back of the device and charges the battery from the sun. That's super cool. Thirdly, it has a really great feature where if you pull on the curtain to close it manually, it will detect this and finish the job for you. The problem with the smart blind motor earlier is that you have to use the motor to control it. 
which makes it annoying for visitors and guests who are used to doing things the old-fashioned way. This feature on the curtain motor is a really nice touch. There are a few things that could be improved on it though. Firstly, it's slow to respond when you ask the app or your favourite voice assistant to close the curtains. I counted a 10 second delay between asking it to close and it actually moving the curtain. It's not really a problem if you're using it for automations that are triggered by time or specific events, but it's really obvious when you click the app to open the curtain and then just sit there staring at it doing nothing for 10 seconds. Secondly, you need to create a SwitchBot account to add a device to the app. I prefer to own devices that don't need a cloud account or internet connection to work. But once it's added to the app and calibrated, the curtain can be controlled using Bluetooth low energy, so there is local control available. Thirdly, it's not that powerful. It can be a bit squeaky and whiny if it's struggling to move a big heavy curtain. I was really disappointed when I first installed it as it could barely open the curtain. Then I actually read the instruction booklet and realised that all of the clips and tape that were in the box were designed to reduce the friction from the curtain, and once I properly installed them, it opens a lot smoother and struggles less. Overall, it's a really good device, and I would recommend it if you want to motorise curtains in your house. It's really discreet as it hides behind the curtain itself, and doesn't require you to make any modifications to the curtain rod or anything else. Adding it to Home Assistant was really easy, as there is a native SwitchBot integration. The integration requires you to have a working Bluetooth radio connected to your Home Assistant, but if you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, Home Assistant Blue or Amber, then you've likely already got one of those. If not, you can purchase a USB Bluetooth adapter for about £10. Also be aware that whilst Bluetooth has a theoretical range of 100 meters, this will be reduced by walls or other things in your house so that your curtains can't be too far away from your home assistant. On the plus side, the reliance on Bluetooth means that you can open and close your curtains without relying on the cloud or internet. To add the curtain controller to home assistant, add the SwitchBot integration and it will scan for any devices nearby. This will then show you the Bluetooth MAC addresses of any of the devices it finds. Give the device a name and leave the password field blank unless you've set a password on the bot itself. This will add the device to your Home Assistant and create the right entities. You can see here it's also been added as a cover and works exactly the same way as the blind motors I showed you earlier. So now that we have automated curtains and automated blinds, what can we do with them? You can always use the app or voice assistant to open and close the blinds. This is really useful if you have reduced mobility or you're just lazy like me and want to open the blinds without getting out of bed. I've also paired this Hue dimmer switch with Home Assistant and stuck it to the wall next to the bed. When I press the up button, it opens the blind. When I press the down button, it closes the blind. And when I press the off button, it stops opening or closing the blind, whatever it's doing. This is done with a Home Assistant automation that has multiple triggers, one for each of the buttons that I'm using, and each one has their own trigger ID. The action then uses a chooser, which looks at which button was pressed based on the trigger ID, and calls the cover.open, cover.close, or cover.stop service accordingly. If you want more information about this automation, or any of the other automations that I talk about in this video, then check out the blog post that I've linked in the description below. I create a blog post for every automation video that I produce with detailed information so that you can recreate the automation in your own smart home without having to constantly pause and restart the video. I've now added the curtains and blinds to my various sunset and morning automations as well. Each evening, 10 minutes before the sun is due to set, I have an automation that closes the bedroom blinds and, if we're home, turn on a light behind the bed. The automation is triggered by the sun trigger with a minus 10 minute offset. I then use a device action to set the blind position to zero, which is fully closed. A condition action then checks to see whether we're home or not, and if we are, it calls the light.turnon service to fade the lights on over 10 seconds to 80% brightness. There's a similar automation that does this in the office as well, while turning the desk lights on. I also want some of the curtains and blinds to open in the morning so that when I come out into the living room or into the office, they're already open. This is a pretty simple automation that is triggered by a time trigger each morning at 7am. I don't have any conditions set for this, as I want the curtains to open and close regardless of whether I'm home or not. This might improve home security as it helps it look like someone is at home, even if we're on holidays. The action then sets the position of both sides of the curtain to 100, which is fully opened. You could set a similar automation like this to be triggered for the bedroom blind to slowly open up in the morning. A lot of people don't know this, but if you use your mobile phone as an alarm clock and have the Home Assistant mobile application installed, you can actually use the time of your next alarm in Home Assistant. Here's an automation that is triggered by this complicated template sensor. If you want more information about how this template sensor works, check out the blog post I've linked in the description below. The template sensor compares the current time with the time of the alarm. If it's 10 minutes past the time the alarm went off, then the automation will trigger. A condition makes sure that the automation only continues if I'm actually at home. 
I don't want the blinds to randomly open up if my partner is asleep at home and I'm away on a business trip or holiday. That would not go down well. The action of the automation opens the blind a quarter of the way and then waits for 10 more minutes before opening the blind to halfway. This way, natural light starts flowing into the house, making it easier to wake up in the morning. You could use this automation to also start playing your favorite music on the bedroom speaker or anything that you want to happen as part of your morning routine. But that's the topic of another video. My final automation closes the curtains in the living room when the TV is turned on. This is because the glare from the sun makes it really hard to see the TV during the day. If I turn the TV on at night, then the curtain should already be closed, so it won't do anything. This is another simple automation that is triggered when the living room TV goes from the off state to the on state. I'm able to detect this because I have an LG TV that is connected directly to Home Assistant. If you want more information about this, I did a whole video about my TV integration and automations, which I've linked in the description below. The automation then simply fully closes both of the curtains. I've been using these devices and automations for a few weeks now, and I have to say, I no longer think they're a gimmick. There's just something magical about it, getting dark outside and having the house automatically respond to that by closing the blinds and turning on the lights without any intervention from you. Home automation, when done well, feels really natural. If you want to live in a magical house like me, then you should check out these other videos I made about the home automations that I use. If you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up to let me know. You should also click the subscribe button so that you can see when I've uploaded new videos so that together we can make your home smarter.